Welcome to Outside Sales Talk, where we meet with industry experts to learn the strategies and tactics that make them successful. I'm your host, Steve Benson, and I've helped thousands of salespeople all over the world crush their quota. Today, I'll help you crush yours. Welcome back to Outside Sales Talk. Today, we have Dominic Capasilli with us, and he's going to talk about how to give the perfect pitch uh, focused on storytelling in sales. So as a bit of background, Dom is the founder and CEO of The Clean Cell. It's a, a sales consulting firm focused on helping small businesses develop a structured and scalable sales strategy with a customized sales playbook. Dom started as a trained storyteller before becoming a successful salesperson and consultant. And by cons combining his storytelling skills with his sales expertise, Dom's helped hundreds of businesses transform their pitch into closing machines and double their revenue. So storytelling is increasingly, increasingly used in businesses today, and we often see it in marketing and advertising campaigns, but it's really important in, in sales. Could you... Could you tell us a bit more about what storytelling is in the business context and why it's so powerful? Yeah, I mean, storytelling is the crux of the way we communicate as human beings. So, you know, whether, whether you're talking about business, whether you're talking about persuading your wife or husband to take out the trash, no matter what you're talking about, a story, storytelling is really, really important in that avenue. And I don't necessarily mean... Um, traditional storytelling in, in like here, here's an allegory about the world, right? Storytelling might be, uh, here is um, the pain points that you're feeling. Here's why you're feeling those pain points. Here's how you should think about solving those pain points. Here's how I solve those pain points. That's what storytelling looks like in business. Um, but the, but Storytelling has, has just been the fundamentals of good salespeople forever. I think a lot of good salespeople are, are not aware that they're actually great storytellers. Um, you know, so, so my background, I didn't come from, uh, you know, I wasn't 21 years old on, on, at a boiler room just cutting my teeth. Uh, you know, I started out as a journalist um, and I really learned conversational writing and, and, uh, in school and I, and I wrote I filed three or four stories uh, every single week, wrote a column for a very small newspaper and just got out there and did it over and over again and, and learned really learned how to tell stories and learned how to write conversationally and quickly that way. And that, that turned into um, an extremely valuable asset for me. Uh, and then I, from there uh, I learned, I went to, I became an author and then I went to school for screenwriting which was really where I learned how to tell a story. If you want to know how to tell a story, you have 90 minutes in a movie to do it um, or, or 30 minutes in a film and you have to take, a, uh, or I'm sorry, in a, uh, in a television um, episode and you have to take somebody on a journey during that time. So, so you really, really become experts at what is involved in the structure of a story. And what you find is all stories have a structure to them. The story that you told this morning, the story that we talked about prior to, uh, prior to getting on air, that had a structure to it. Now, you may not consciously know that, and most salespeople and most really good storytellers or persuasive people aren't aware of what that actually looks like. Um, but my background, you know, kind of enabled me to understand how, like, how to break that down and demystify what actually goes into a, into a good story and into a good sales pitch. Um, and I... You know, I found when I actually started my sales career, I thought I was going to going to be behind, you know, and I found that the prep, the prep that I did was the best that I possibly could have had to have a successful sales career, you know, and I was able to, to turn that background and, and that ability to write conversationally and to, to tell a good story into, into a, a successful sales career. Very cool. Tell me, uh, Tell me how storytelling is different for a salesperson than telling a story for a movie or a television show or an article or a book. Yeah, I mean, I think it, for those things, you have to think about the subject of the story, right? So the subject of the story, and this is, this is the mistake that, that most people make, 
um, the subject of a story of a movie is an independent subject, right? And I'm telling, I'm telling the story of Luke Skywalker, right? And in Star Wars and everything that, that he's going, that he's going through. And, you know, in, in the context of a movie, um, you're telling that independent story in the context of a sales pitch, you're not telling Luke's story. You need to be telling your client's story. Um, and I think where, where most, most salespeople go wrong, most founders go wrong for sure, uh, is they're very, very good at telling their story, but nobody cares about their story. They care about their own. So what you need to get much better at is telling a client their story, the, uh, telling a client that you're speaking to about the story that they have, the story of the problem they have that you solve. Um, and, I, and I think that's really, really a key differentiator and it's if I can pare down everything that I do for my clients into into uh, you know one sentence, it's I teach them how to tell their client's story, not their own. And that's the big difference, I think, uh, from you know from a movie, but also from a um, but also from what most people are doing. Yeah, Does that, make that, sense? that makes a ton of sense. Uh, I don't, Another big difference that I see uh, that I, I coach people when I'm teaching them how to, how to kind of give a sales pitch and, and give their story to a customer is like a lot of people because of the way, you know, Hollywood or books are written, just the way that's most interesting to people, people like to put the, the punchline at the end. And, uh, and, and sometimes with a sales in a sales situation, you're, I find you're better off if you, if you put the, the main point you, you kind of lead with it because that captures their attention up front and, uh, and shows them why this is important. Um, the one, one way I'll, I'll describe this is I, I, I I'll say, don't, you, you want to have a dinosaur feature or a dinosaur value proposition. And, and what I mean by that is I want you to injure in the movie Jurassic park, right? They, a, a great story, by the way, <laughs> but, but when they, bring... I, I watched that movie with my girlfriend the other day and I, and she'd never seen it. What? And I, and, yeah, I know I, that was my, that was my first problem. But the, uh, <laughs> uh, so I said, we're watching this immediately and I forgot just how great that movie is. Oh, and, so it's still, and it still holds up and it's because it keeps you on your edge of the seat mm -hmm. the entire time with, with, very typical little stories throughout like little set pieces where it's where it's problem uh, or it's it's uh, we need to do this here's what's getting in our way here's how we get over here's how we get over that and that mm -hmm. that's what the entire last hour of the movie is and it, it's captivating and sorry it, to cut you off on your no on no your for, story, it, yeah. it absolutely is it's fantastic um and, and there, there's something that i think all salespeople can learn from that movie um and and that is the way that that park introduces and tells its story to its customers. Mm -hmm. So when you show up at Jurassic Park, you, you know, you, you get off the boat or off the helicopter or whatever it is, and they don't take you to the lab and kind of start setting up, oh, here's how we make a dinosaur. We find it in the am we find the mosquito with the blood in it in the amber, and then we make a dinosaur out of it like this, and here's an egg. They don't show you the egg first and the mosquito first you get off that, that helicopter and the first thing they do is they show you a dinosaur, right? And that's what you want to do when you're selling is you want to lead with that dinosaur feature in your story. You want to, you want to communicate here, here is the, here's the big message on why this is important, why you're interested. And then you can go into the, the you know, the, the littler features and the littler concepts and the, how it works and why it works later. But first, you know, if you have a dinosaur feature, show the dinosaur and uh, right up front. Yeah. In my, in journalism, we used to call that don't bury the lead. So yeah, there you go. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, and, and I think it's an important distinction though, because I, I think if I'm listening to this and I'm, and I'm a salesperson, I'm like, okay, great. What's my dinosaur. And it's very easy to misinterpret that for what your, dino, what your dinosaur is. So in a movie, the way that I refer to, you know, in a movie, there's really four main things that happen in a movie, right? There's the setup. Here's the world. Here, here's Jurassic Park. There's the stakes. Oh, wow. What happens if this goes poorly? And you kind of see what that looks like. Then, there's, then there is um, 
there is these there's like what's the cost of uh you know I'm, I'm sorry there's a, a glimmer of hope is the next piece which is like oh wow either everything's going really really great and it starts going badly or everything's going really really badly and it starts going great and there's kind of that sea change that happens in the middle of the movie jurassic park it's the t-rex attack everything was going great and then it started going it started going very poorly um, and that, that kind of shows, okay, there's a change happening here. And then finally the last piece is save the day, get the, get the people out. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, and what's that look like within a sales pitch? So that setup, the setup is show me the dinosaur in, uh, in, um, Jurassic park, but in a sale, in a sales pitch, the setup is uh, what's the world that you're looking at right now. You know, I think a lot of, a lot of of my clients jump to the solution before they talk about the problem and the setup and, and sometimes they'll even start with here's why the problem is happening before they've talked about the problem that's hap that is actually happening for these clients. So a lot of times, a pro I, I'm sure this happens to you. Sometimes a client, a client has all these pain points and they're trying to figure out uh, what are these pain points you know, uh, they're trying to figure out how to solve these pain points and what they think the solution is or what they think their problem is, isn't actually what it is. So you start telling them what their pro what their real problem is, but you haven't earned the right to do that yet because you haven't shown them the dinosaur. You haven't, you haven't shown them the, you haven't met them where they're at in their world. So the beginning of any sales pitch really comes down to uh, speaking to a client and getting them to understand that you get their pain points and where they're at, you know, what I, what I work with my clients is, you know, I have a great, uh, I don't know if I can say uh, swear on this, but I, I have a great BS detector myself. So I will, I will always talk to clients or I'm sorry, whenever I'm getting pitched, I don't believe anybody like you, you know, if there's a woman running in for help on New York city, I want, I want to see who's chasing her first before I, before I help her out. I'm an extremely cynical person because I'm a salesperson. Um, but the thing that, that turns me and gives people credibility is when is when uh, someone starts describing the pain points I have as if it was going through my head, you know, as if I, as if I was actually as if that was actually happening to me. So I, you know, so um, when they're talking, when they're speaking, when they're speaking about those pain points, um, I'm saying, wow, this person really gets it. Mm -hmm. That's when you let the guard down. And then that's when you've earned the right to start pitching them on other things. When I start jumping to here's my solution before you even, before you've even covered the pain points that I have or, or made me realize that you understand those pain points, I'm way ahead and you're not going, you're skipping everything in the buyer's journey. So the first, the first thing is to take somebody from skeptical uh, to interested. And you don't do that unless you show them the dinosaur or in the case of a sales pitch, unless you, um, describe their pain points to them as if they were describing it themselves or yeah. you get them to describe it. You know, you can ask questions and, and uh, really get them to dig in and show them that you understand what their pain is. Yes. Yeah, so let's talk about the structure a little. So step one is to make them aware. You know, I guess you're, you're talking to a reason. So you have aware for a reason you have awareness with them. They, they know kind of what you do. But so that's then step two would be because you're already in the conversation, I guess. So step two is, uh, well, I guess I should let you do it. What would, what would you say step two would be? Let's, let's, let's give people numbers so they can kind of take themselves through it. Yeah. So, so step two is why is the problem? It's a reframe, right? Why is the problem happening? Especially if you're working with a disruptive product that people don't necessarily need, right? You're not selling a commodity to someone. So if you're selling, and most of you, I'm sure most of your listeners are selling more of a disruptive product or a product that is, you know, they have to find a need for. It's not, you know, a commodity. It's not towels. They're not buying towels or anything like that. So when that's happening, there's a reframe that happens. And that's, that's you showing them the forest through the trees, right? Mm -hmm. so, so what that looks like is I'm a doctor. You just told me the 10 symptoms that you're having. I, and I told, and I say, okay. With these 10 symptoms, it sounds like this is probably what's going on. And, you know, this is, this is in the challenger sale ideal uh, where you're saying to them, essentially, I'm an expert in this one problem. You have 300 problems that are happening to you every single day. And you and, you know, you're, but I am really going in deep 
on this one problem that I know you have, or these two problems that I know you have, and I'm going to, I'm going to educate you on why these problems are happening. Uh, so here's, here's what's going on. And here's what, ha here's also what happens if you don't fix these problems. So that's step two. Does that, does that make sense? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so once you, once you've done that, that's kind of like the, that's the, that's the stakes portion of the movie, right? So if we're going through, if we're going through, let's use Star Wars, cause uh, you know, let's see how nerdy we can get on one podcast. <laughs> uh, but so let's use Star Wars, right? The setup is Luke wants to, is Luke's, homesick uh leia leia just escaped from the from the empire right step two is what are the stakes uh the stakes in star wars are now that wow if the emperor gets a hold of these plans we're in big trouble the entire universe the entire universe is screwed mm -hmm. so in a sales pitch what happens if you don't fix these pain or what happens if you don't what is the real problem here and what happens if you don't solve it and that's to the point where you get them you get them to like jump i i would say bridge jumping territory, right? Like now they're like, oh man, you're like halfway through your pitch or halfway through your, not necessarily your pitch talking at them, but halfway through your sales conversation. Um, and you're, they're at a point where they're like, wow, this is tough, right? Like if you're doing your job well with them and you've done the first two steps, right, they're going to be pretty discouraged at this point. And then you move and that's where the sea change happens. You start to give them a glimmer of hope, right? And you say, uh, in this case, it is uh, if you if we stick with the Star Wars thing, uh, Luke has or they found they found plans to the Death Star. Obi Wan Kenobi was killed. Everything's terrible. They found plans to the Death Star. There's a chance that they can they can get through and they can they can solve they can win this battle, right? So that's just a glimmer of hope. And then if you notice in the movie, everything from there starts going back upwards. Right. Like the, it starts going, everything starts going good for the big guys until they get uh, to that last big challenge. And then they win uh, in a sales pitch. You're now at a point where you've took, you've taken them low and they're looking for answers. They're begging for answers. Like, okay, I know I have a problem now. How do I go about, how do I go about fixing this? And most people jump to the solution, right? Most people have, have Luke blow up the death star right at this moment. That's not what you do. In this situation, you start telling them, okay, here is, here is how you need to start thinking differently about this problem to solve it, whether my company or my solution existed or not, right? Does that, that's a subtle difference, mm -hmm. um, but it's a very, very important one. So I'm, I'm, I'm giving you the, I'm not giving you, here's what the clean cell does. I'm giving you, here are the principles, here are the principles behind why I created the clean cell. And here's how you need to think about solving this problem. So in, in the case of uh, founders that I work with, um, in the case of founders I work with, a lot of them hire VPs of sales. They do, they do this kind of, uh, before, they're, before they really should. They have four, five or 10 clients and they're like, I need to scale and they hire a VP of sales and they kind of do this like in-house outsourcing, which is a terrible idea. It never, it very rarely works out. Mm -hmm. um, so I start telling them, listen, you got to get out there and you got to be talking to clients. You have to be the one doing it. If you're not, if you're not out there, to, whether you work with me or not, or whether we work together or not, or you come up with the perfect pitch or not, you need to be out there being the one selling until you've got it down so well that you can bring in somebody else who can follow your lead. And don't bring in a senior person because you're going to pay way too much for them. Um, and they're not going to be uh, and generally, they're not going to want to get their hands dirty. Bring in two junior people who can execute on the playbook that you just put together. So that's like, that has nothing to do with them working with me at this point, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just telling them about, here are the things that you need to start thinking about in order to solve this problem. So that's step, that's step three. Now, step four is, hey, you know, I, ho I hope you take this advice um, here's how I'm sol here's one way to approach this problem. Here's how I'm solving it for my clients. Mm -hmm. And this is Luke, this is Luke blowing up the Death Star, right? This is, this is where you come in and you save the day. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say to my, my clients, listen, you're a technical, you're a technical and subject matter expert. You've taken a long, you've taken a long time to become that expert in what you, in what you do. Uh, and you've been beating on your craft for a long time. You've earned the right to call yourself an expert. 
but you're not an expert in sales. There's two problems. And, and the problem, the main problem with that is the sales burden still falls on your shoulders right now. So uh, what I do is I work with, I work with founders to bridge the gap between founder led sales and a structured and scalable sales effort. If you try to do this year, if you try to hire VP of sales, that won't work. If you try to hire two junior people right now without giving them uh, any structure, they're going to, they're going to flounder. If you try to do it yourself, there's no way you can, you can do that efficiently. So I, I bridge that gap for you until I work myself out of a job and you can hire two people to execute on the plan we build together. Right. So that's now, so now I am, I am pitching them on what my solution to the problem, but I'm not forcing that upon them. I'm just saying, here is the way that we best think solves this problem. Here's the need that we saw in the market. So it's a very, it, it like, it's a very soft way of persuading someone and you're giving them value, whether they end up working with you or not. You know, sometimes people aren't ready for that. Sometimes people don't have the, the budget for that, but they remember, they remember those things when they do get to that point or when they try one of those steps that we've warned them about and they don't work out. So we end up getting a call six months later when they hire a VP of sales and that VP of sales, you know, invariably doesn't work out for them. Absolutely. Um, and, and that's actually the same advice I give. I, I give a lot of advice to people starting off, uh, you know, who founded companies and are trying to develop their sales side. And that's the exact advice I give them is as a founder, you have to be able to sell this. You've got to be, you're, you're the number one salesperson. And as you've got enough activity that you can't do it anymore, don't you bring in the two, the two junior people that can, that you can then get up to success. And once you, once you've brought those two junior people to success, that's a time when you can either that, that, that you can bring in a sales leader or, or promote from within. But, um, you've got to get them. If you don't have those, you, it's really a bad idea to bring in someone from the outside uh, right off the bat. Yeah. I mean, you got to think about it, right? Like the, the um, think about the person who you're hiring for that position. They're either going to, they're either going to rip half most of your equity away. You know, if you're, if you're hiring someone who has the exper enough experience to actually build an entire sales operation from scratch, that person's going to want to be compensated very, very well, or they're going to be someone who has uh, you know, industry experience, uh, which also might mean that they've just been kind of average at every job they've had, but they've been doing it for 20 years and then they're going to come in and they're not going to want to get their hands dirty. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they're not, and also their, their experience as a VP of sales, you know, if they're working at GE as a VP of, uh, or, you know, if they're working at GE as a sales rep, that's an entirely different skill set than someone who has to go out and build a sales process from the ground up. So yeah, it's just, mm -hmm. it, it's a very low probability of finding that person who has, who has all those skill sets together. Yeah, uh, I, I completely agree. So what, what techniques or strategies would you say that outside sales reps and, and sales leaders should use to develop this story in this structure that, you, that you've laid out here? Yeah. So don't guess. I think guessing is a terrible idea, right? Like I, I, I I'll give you an example. So I used to work at ZocDoc. Uh, which is a online appointment booking for doctors company. Um, mm -hmm. Big startup and big startup in New York was, was moving, moving very, very well still is. Um, and I sold to optometrists. Um, eye doctors. You probably could have used Badger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we could have. Uh, so, so I was, I was selling to optometrists and I remember I got real excited. This is when I first kind of cut my teeth. I was like, I got my first optometrist appointment. The doctor was going to talk to me, super excited about it. And I got on the phone and I was like, listen, we're going to bring you better paying pay. Or we're going to bring you more younger patients. They're going to stay with you forever. Your practice is going to jump all through the roof from this. It's going to be the best thing that ever happened to you. And he hung up on me. <laughs> didn't say Didn't say a word, hung up on me. And I was just like, oh God, what is, what's happening here? Um, so the, uh, so I called him back and I said, Hey, we got disconnected. And he's like, we didn't get disconnected. I hung up on you. And I was like, okay, can you, you know, do you, are you not interested in, you know, any, anything that I mentioned about the, the benefits here? And he said, no. And I said, well, can you tell me why you don't want any younger 
patients or, you know, people that'll stay with you for a while. And he goes, and this, this very, very kind man told me, a, he said, listen, here's the deal. He goes, I, if I have any more younger patients, I'm going to be out of business. And I was like, okay, what do you mean? And he said, well, younger patients, uh, he goes, they come in, they get the eye exam, which I make no money on. And then they go look at all the, look at the frames in the store where I actually make money on. They pick out the frames they want. Then they go home and they, they buy them on the internet for 40% cheaper. So I don't need any younger patients. And I just said, <laughs> I said, okay. I said, wow. All right. You know, like fair, fair enough. Hung up, went back, did some research, thought about everything that he had said, tried to, tried to really understand what, what was happening. Got my next appointment with another doctor, with another optometrist. And I said, Hey, First thing I said when we got the phone, I said, listen, he's like, I don't have a lot of time. I said, listen, tell me if this is happening to you. Almost every optometrist that we speak with is telling me that a lot of patients are coming into their, coming in, getting their exam, looking at their frames, and then they know they're going back and buying them on the internet for much cheaper and it's killing their business. This, this person, this optometrist was like, that's exactly what's happening to me. Uh, and I had him from that moment on, he had all the time in the world for me because that was a big business problem that, that he had. So mm -hmm. what I told, you know, what I told him, and this wasn't, this wasn't BS. Um, I said, listen, you know, like that problem is not going to go away. You know, you can't like put your head in, you can't put your head in the sand about that problem. The internet, you know, this was before Warby Parker actually, like the internet, you know, the internet uh, commerce, e-commerce machine is not going anywhere. I'm like you really have, I'm like, you're really, your only choices are to start working with better insurances. You know, because when someone has a really good insurance, they get a $250 stipend for glasses and they don't care where they buy them. They don't want to go through the inconvenience of dealing with that. Um, and I said, you know, coincidentally, one of the things that ZocDoc is known for is that you can select which insurances that you accept. At, the, at this time, you could. Uh, you can accept which insurances you select and you can put only the best vision plans on there. And you still take anybody who comes into your store, but over time, you're building your practice because you're only filtering in these people with good insurances. And that's a way to keep afloat and, and really battle against that. And I closed every optometrist I spoke to for the next two years with that exact pitch. And that comes from, that's how I learned. I listened, said, okay, what's your problem? What are your pain points here? And then I connected those pain points to the larger story at hand. And it was all true. There's nothing, there was no yeah. manipulation that happened there, you know? Absolutely. And I think that's, that's the part, that's the piece that salespeople have to do have to do well in order to be successful. They have to understand and listen to the people that they're, they're talking to say a sales pitch goes terribly, ask for feedback, right? Ask them, okay, what's, you know, what pain points that you had was what pain points did you have around this area that I, that I didn't touch on? What, what was the miscommunication? You know, people will be, you'll be surprised what people will actually tell you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's that's an incredible story for our listeners. I think, and uh, well, I, I guess to to dig deeper there, how what other tips and tricks do you have to uncover the customer's true pain? Yeah, I mean, it's you have to know your business, right? Like, I I, I, I hate to, I hate to mention this, but you know, I, you can't you can't make assumptions about this. You know, so with some of my clients that, that we work with, I, I keep going back to you need to talk to clients or prospective clients. Um, some of the clients that we're working with, they'll have one or two clients when they start and they're like, listen, we got to scale sales here. And I'm like, you don't even know what you have yet. You know, like you, do, you have no idea what you have at this point. Um, I don't think that'll be the case with your listeners. Generally, these are going to be sales reps who are selling, you know, products they've sold quite a few times. Mm -hmm. But I, I think it's even okay to reach out to a client or to a prospective client and just ask them for a feedback conversation. I do this and it, it, they end up being the pipeline, your early pipeline with a new company. But, you know, I, I think I, I've reached out to a prospect and just said, listen, I don't, I'm not trying to sell you anything. We're trying to make sure we're building a product that actually solves a problem that you have. Mm -hmm. So I want to understand what your problems are without directing you to my solution. That's a really important piece actually, I think now that, now that we're talking about it for your audience, which is I think that they need to, they need to make sure that they're, they're talking to them, not about their solution, but about the problems and pain points that they're dealing with on a daily basis before they ever get to the solution, right? Start becoming, ask those questions like, okay, well, what's, 
what's keeping you up at night with regard to X, which is, which are the issues that I talk about. You know, when I, when I work with clients on reaching, on doing outreach emails, I don't say, Hey, let me tell you all about Badger Maps. What I, what I ask is, you know, are you having issue? Are you having issues um, in the area of X or in the area of Y and whatever your pro, whatever problems you solve are X and Y. So whenever I reach out to someone via email, I say, Hey, listen, I know you just got funded. Uh, I'm assuming you probably have, you know, I, I thought it was, I thought it was a good time to reach out because uh, you may have a directive to scale your sales. And I was wondering what your strategy to do that is. That's my question, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not, I'm not jumping to my solution. I'm jumping, I'm asking about the questions and, and like kind of what their plans are, what their priorities are, how they're going to go about solving those things. So before you ever get to the product, start asking the, the questions. Such fantastic advice. All right, so let's move on to the next step of the stage in the show here. Uh, I call it sales in 60 seconds. So I'm going to ask you a series of, of uh, questions, and the goal is to answer it within 60 seconds. So uh, quick I'm in. questions and answers. All right. So number one, what should salespeople absolutely avoid when delivering a sales pitch? Uh, talking about how great their solution is. Truth, truth. Uh, can you recommend some resources for salespeople who want to improve their storytelling and pitching skills? Yeah, the absolute best book ever written on on storytelling, I think, is Story by Robert McKee. It's it's an incredible book, and I think it's a good book to read for anyone who needs to persuade anyone about anything. It really deconstructs what a story is all about. Um, if you want something a little bit more um, sales focused. Uh, the challenger customer is really, really good. It's so it's the it's the the challenge. It's the follow up to the challenger sale, uh, and it's more of a customer focused piece. And it's really, really strong on how to talk on how to talk to customers, you know, and how to form your pitch. They have some great chapters in there uh, that are around that. That are kind. Of, that's kind of a uh, a mix of the the way that I my background and then kind of coming at it from a sales angle too. Um, Save the Cat is a really good screenwriting book, actually, which I think will be good for any salesperson. And again, it deconstructs what actually is involved in, in telling a good story. Fantastic. Well, we'll get all this uh, in, in the in the notes. so People can link straight to uh, to buy it online or whatever to, you know, we'll, we'll put the Amazon links in there. Awesome. Um, what are the cornerstones of a successful sales pitch, in your opinion? Okay. Uh, so a successful sales pitch, when we're talking cornerstones, can I ask a follow-up question or is that even about 60 seconds? So we're talking <laughs> cornerstones. Do you mean, do you mean principles or the structure of the actual pitch? Um, uh, the, the structure, the structure of the actual okay. pitch. Okay. What are my pain points? Right. What are the pain points that your client, that your client is having? We covered this a little bit. What are, why are they, those pain points happening? Reframe for them. Tell them, tell them, show them the forest through the trees. If you can do that, you'll have them on your side. What are the principles that they need to apply? How do they need to think about this problem differently than they're thinking about it now to solve it? And that has nothing to do with your solution. How do you solve that problem for your clients? That is your entire sales pitch. That is your core sales story. Now, sometimes you get there by asking questions and getting them to tell that story, right? Especially the pain points part. So, I mean, you have to become, you, I don't want to just talk at somebody, you know, sometimes when you're giving a huge presentation to a bunch of people, um, you know, you will, you'll be speaking, you'll be, have to speak at them. But generally when it's a conversation, you want them to t be telling you those pain points. You want to make sure that you're clarifying them, you know, and then you can tell, and then you can get into the other pieces, the educational pieces. Outstanding. So you said your therapist gave you the best business advice you ever received. What was that? Oh yeah. Uh, so I, I was having a really frustrating month where I was about to get promoted and I had just, I had just killed, I just absolutely killed it in my territory for three months straight, but everything reset on a monthly quota, which is insane. But you know, I was like, man, I burned out my territory and I was so angry because I'm like, they're not going to care. If I, if I, if I go before performance, they're not going to care. They're not going to look at anything except that. And I'm not going to get this promotion, which I deserve. And I was 
and I was showing up at work every day, angry as hell, trying to find some leads, but just super pissed. And I had an appointment with him and he goes, listen, he goes, you, you have a right, like things are not fair here. You can do, you could possibly, you could do every single thing right. And you could fail every single thing. Right. And you could fail. And you have two choices. You can accept that. You can accept that you might fail and keep doing everything that you're, you can do with an open heart or like with a, with a being relaxed about it, or you can be super pissed off about how unfair it is. And there, those are your two choices. So I took the first one and I realized accepting that failure was a possibility, not saying that I'm not going to try my hardest, but saying, Hey, I could do everything right. And it might not work. Uh, and, uh, accepting that really freed me up and I was able to, I was able to close what I needed to close that month because I was just in a much better mood and I became a better salesperson because I accepted that I could do everything right and fail. That's fantastic. Um, given, given that you're an expert in sales storytelling, what's your best advice that you would like to give our listeners? You know, I think we've talked, I think we've touched on a lot of it. Um, I would say, talk to your customers, understand the problem from there, understand how they're perceiving the problems that you solve right now, because there's nuances that you don't understand. And a lot of times people are buying from you. Talk to your five best customers and understand what the problems that they had before they bought from you were and make, and see where, see where everything lines up because there's probably nuances of your solution that you're not even aware of. Uh, and people buy for very different reasons than you think they buy. So true. And uh, as a final takeaway, what should the field salespeople listening today do as a first step to start crafting their sales story and delivering the perfect pitch? Figure out the 10 questions that you can ask at the beginning of a sales pitch that will, that will lead them to, that will lead you to understand what your client's problems are in the areas that you solve. Outstanding. Well, next uh, I'm going to summarize all the stuff that we've talked about here today. Um, and I'll, I'll try to get that done in two minutes or so, just for all the people that are on the road and stuff. Sure. Um, so in business, storytelling is about the pain points you are feeling and how various products can help solve those pains and meet certain needs. For salespeople in particular, the subject of a sales story needs to be about the prospect or client and their problem that you solve. Don't make the story about you and your product. Make sure you communicate your big message first and then get into the details or features. Remember, if you have a dinosaur, show it at the beginning. It's also important to talk about the problem first that your client has before you mention the solution. With every sales pitch, you need to understand your client and get to the bottom of their pain points. And once you understand those pain points, you can describe them to the customer. And now you've earned the right to pitch them something and actually present your solution. Show the prospect that you're an expert in the particular problem that they're having and explain why those problems are happening and how they can be solved. And then as a salesperson, you often need to remind the prospect that they need to look at their problem differently in order to solve it and tell them what they need to start thinking about. And that's, that's whether they end up buying your product or service or, or, or not, whether they don't buy from you. Um, only in the last step you bring in how your product or service solves their problem. And you do it, you can do this in a very non pushy way, right? You can, sometimes people, they're just not ready yet, but they'll, they'll remember that you brought them value when they are ready. When, when you don't know your prospect story and background and what's going on with them, what their problems are, don't, don't guess. Make sure you do research beforehand about what their problem is and, and how you might be able to solve it. With that, you can really craft your story and capture their attention by talking about the biggest pain points that they have when a sales pitch goes wrong, ask for feedback and listen to the prospect. You'll be surprised how much they'll share with you. Ask them what keeps them up at night regarding certain areas of their business and what are their current issues? What problems are they dealing with right now? This will help you 
improve your pitch and story over time and learn from your bad pitches. Keep in mind that before you even get to your solution, talk about the pain points first and really, really understand your customer's pain points. Dom mentioned some great books to, to check out. Story by Robert McKee is a great book about storytelling and how you can develop your story. The Challenge Your Customer is a follow-up to this, The Challenge Your Sale and is more on the sales side and, and helps you focus on, on, on crafting your perfect pitch. Um, so let's summarize really quick the cornerstones and structures of a successful sales pitch again. First, because this, this is really important, I thought. First, you, you, you need to talk about and understand the prospect's pain points. Second, explain to them why those problems are happening. Third, let the prospect know how they need to think about the problem differently to solve it in general. And last, explain how you can help solve it and, how to, and, and then bring in your solution only at that point. Finally, to get started and deliver your perfect pitch with your next prospect, figure out the 10 questions that you can ask at the beginning of your sales pitch that will help you uncover the main pain points that they have in the area where you can provide a solution. This has been really fantastic, Dom. Where, where can listeners read more about your work and how do they reach out to you? Yeah, sure. So someone can, if you want, you can email me directly. And it's dom, D-O-M, at thecleancell.com. Uh, or you can go to my website, www.thecleancell.com. Awesome. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed this episode of the Outside Sales Talk. Uh, if you have any feedback or suggestions, as always, feel free to reach out to us at feedback at outsidesalestalk.com. If you like the podcast, please subscribe and leave a review. It helps us spread the word and let field salespeople, everybody know about this. So take care and uh, talk to you next week.